found at a stop sign, a fork in the road Shaking my emotions, looking at my options Which way to go? It's a moment of decision, an opportunity To do what's right by you And what's best for me So maybe I will do just what I know that I should do Even when it isn't really what I'm wanting to I know there is a way that I can honor you And so I'm gonna do just what This universal remote is absolutely incredible. It controls everything. I'm Jacob, and I love remote controls. They make me feel so powerful, you know? I'm in control. But today, I'm here to talk to you about the power of self-control. Self-control is choosing to do what you should even when you don't want to. Self-control really comes in handy. It can keep you out of trouble. It can help you avoid mistakes. It can help you in what you do and in what you say. Ugh. You need self-control to get you through every single... I'm sorry, it's, it's my sister. I, I told her I was busy right now. And I, I'll just, this will only take a second. What? No, I told you that I'm, I'm busy. I'm doing the, I'm doing the video thing about the self-control. No, but I told you, I tell you every time. You can't call me because I'm, I'm working here. But you always, <laughs> sorry, this, you might want to fast forward this part. Actually, I can fast forward this part. I tell you every single time, I'm already working hard enough, okay? YouTube's demonetizing everything. I'm talking, I'm trying, I'm trying to think, bring God to the kids. I told that as my, as my appropriate, always oh, has a, Sorry about that. I I hope you couldn't hear me. I uh, I really gave my sister a piece of my mind. Actually, now that I think about it, I, I'm wondering, maybe I gave her a little too much of a piece of my mind. 
But you know what they say, I, I, words can never harm me, right? Right? I don't feel so powerful anymore. In today's story, we'll learn just how powerful words can be. I'll see you in a bit. I've got I've to make a phone call. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Proverbs, chapter 12, verse 18. King Solomon was one of the wisest men who ever lived, and like any parent, he wanted to pass that wisdom down to his children. So he collected many wise sayings that were later written down in the book of Proverbs. My son, listen to your father's advice. Don't turn away from your mother's teaching. What they teach you will be like a beautiful crown on your head. Solomon's children were royalty, but Solomon was more concerned with the choices they would make than whatever royal robe or crown they would wear. My son, accept my words. Store up my commands inside you. Let your ears listen to wisdom. Apply your heart to understanding. There are hundreds of wise sayings in Proverbs, and a lot of them mention the same thing over and over and over. Your words. Yep. You remember that old saying? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Meh. Not true. What comes out of your mouth is strong and powerful. Words can end a friendship. It can make people believe a lie. It can make people lose their trust in you. Here's what King Solomon had to say about it. The words of thoughtless people cut like swords, but the tongue of wise people brings healing. This is my double sword, commonly known as, yeah, scissors. Now, you might think that one tiny little comment might not really hurt anyone. That was a dumb thing to do. Can't you get anything right? Sorry, you can't sit here. Did you even look in the mirror? Cry, baby. No big deal, right? I mean, it's not like any of these little cuts did any real damage. But deep down inside, none of us are just one layer. We're way more complicated than a single sheet of paper. Our stories have a bunch of different layers. So when you say, just get over it, your words might cut way deeper than you ever imagined. Ouch. But there is a way to keep your words from slicing deep like this. Think before you speak. Take a few seconds, use your imagination. Maybe you feel like saying, You're a loser, so you'll never hear me say you're good enough. Stop. Ask yourself, How would I feel if someone said this to me? Would it hurt? If the answer is yes, keep your mouth shut. Or better yet, change those words. You're good enough, so you'll never hear me say you're a loser. Your words can encourage and comfort. They can speak truth and bring wisdom. Hey, can I help? I'm really sorry you're having a rough day. I want you on my team. I love the way you always pick bright colors. You're really brave. Your words are so strong, they can make someone's day and help heal some pretty deep cuts. In fact, your words are one of the very best ways to fulfill the mission Jesus gave us. Love one another, just as I have loved you. If you love one another, everyone will know you are my disciples. Your words are your superpower. So, before you let a single word out of that mouth today, ask yourself. Is it gonna hurt or is it gonna help? Like Solomon reminds us, the words of thoughtless people cut like swords, but the tongue of wise people brings healing. I shouldn't have said what I did. That was, I'm sorry. I just lost my cool. Um, and there was no reason for that. Um, but I'm very sorry and I love you. Thanks. All right. It feels a lot better when you're in control of the words you say. 
King Solomon had a way with words. So he really knew what he was talking about when he wrote, The words of thoughtless people cut like swords, but the tongue of wise people brings healing. So if you don't think before you speak, you could really hurt someone. I bet you've been hurt by someone else who didn't think before they spoke. On the other hand, if you do think and you say encouraging words, you can help someone. Maybe you've been helped by someone's encouragement. It's strange how sometimes mouths move faster than our brains. It's like we can't wait to say that perfect comeback or tell that joke about someone that's just going to make everyone else laugh. But instead of fast forward, our words should be moving slow. Jesus had a half-brother named James, and he wrote this. Everyone should be quick to listen, but they should be slow to speak. They should be slow to get angry. So the next time your mouth is moving fast forward and you think you're about to say something hurtful, slow down. Think about how your words are going to affect other people. Will they cut like a sword or bring healing? And if you absolutely can't think of any healing words to say, you might want to press the mute button. The one thing to remember today is, oh, the one thing to remember today is this. Think before you speak. Your words are very powerful, and you get to choose how you use them. This thing is pretty powerful too. SAP. I wonder what that does. Huh. Nada parece. Ah, bueno. Hasta luego. Adiós. <laughs>